was a point I think that the prosecution wants to bring out is that his girlfriend at the time she was interviewed after this happened, she her initial testimony or interview was there wasn't any racial slurs. And then she her boyfriend told her that there was she changed her story. So that's something maybe the prosecution wants to use here. But ultimately, I mean, this is a case of self-defense, right? So the prosecution has to disprove that beyond a reasonable doubt if there is a trial in this case. So it really does come down to what, what the defendant, what his state of mind was in those moments, what he observed, right? And and whether or not that constituted a reasonable fear for his and his girlfriend's life. Yes, that's always what the assessment is, whether or not the jury can put themselves in the defendant's place in a self-defense case to determine whether or not the actions were reasonable given the circumstances that were present. That's what the decision is gonna come down to. If it gets passed, of course, this uh, procedural hearing, that's what the jury will ultimately decide. And in a, in a kind of mini version, that's what the judge is deciding here, um, whether or not based on all of the facts, uh, his actions in standing his ground were warranted, called for, reasonable, and something that he was legally able to do. Right, and the defense also, this is, like you said, an evidentiary hearing, but it's important not only just to try to, to get him off, but also to help build a foundation, almost like an exploratory uh, hearing here, like conducting discovery. You, know, you have these witnesses on the stand under oath. That's a super advantage for to go into, if, if this does go to a trial, to have in your wheelhouse as a defense attorney. You kind of know what the witnesses are going to say. You're going to know how to counter them, right? So there's kind of a dual purpose to having this immunity hearing. Absolutely, absolutely. A thousand percent. I'm over here nodding in agreement. Um, you know, anytime you get a chance to have witnesses committed under oath, anytime you get a chance for them to tell their story again, and you may have to contrast that with a later um, proceeding, then, I mean, that's a great opportunity. If you can find something where their testimony is contrasting from one proceeding to another, that's what's called impeachment. And as you stated, this is a credibility assessment. So if you can impeach a witness in a scenario like this from two different under oath testimonies at two different proceedings, and you can show that that testimony was different, then that shines a huge light. You gotta pay attention. Is this person credible? You know, the whole theory is, were you lying then or are you lying now? Which one is it? Mm -hmm. You can't say that in those words, right. but you can definitely make that inference to the jury. And if this case goes there, then the defense could have a phenomenal opportunity in that.